The conversation happening up up until now in these ayat was Kutiba alaykum ya ayyuhalladhina amanu You who believe, Muslim community, I'm talking to you In the very next ayah, Allah doesn't talk to us He's talking to His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And He says, whenever my slaves ask you about me Whenever my slaves ask you about me Do you know the difference between when and if? There's a father whose son goes to the army Does he say, if my son comes back, I'll be so happy? What does he say? When my son comes back, it'll be amazing. He never says if, because if is hopeless. If seems to suggest in my mind, maybe he's dead, or he's not making it. But his hope is alive, so he says, in anticipation and love, in joy, he says when. Allah didn't say, if my slave asks you about me. He said, when my slave will ask you about me, because Allah is waiting in anticipation for you to ask about him. For me to ask about him. He didn't say if, he said when. When are you going to ask about me? When are you going to want to learn more about me? And who should you ask? You should ask the right teacher. So who do they come and ask? The Sahaba? The Ibadi? Who do they go ask? The Prophet ﷺ. Now here's the logical flow of the conversation. I want you to appreciate these subtleties in the Qur'an. If they ask you about me, then tell them, then tell them I am near. That's the supposed ayah. Allah did not say, then tell them. فَقُلْ لَهُمْ لَمْ يَقُلْ لَمْ يَذْكُرْ هَذَا إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If my slaves ask you about me, you don't tell them I am near. You know what? I'm going to tell them myself. Then I am near. All you had to do to get close to Allah was ask about Him. Somebody says, I feel, God, I feel so distant from Allah, man. I feel so distant. Allah says, have you asked about me? You know when you miss someone, you ask about them. You know that, right? You miss Allah? You want to talk to Him? Ask about Him? Allah guarantees. And by the way, don't be in any doubt. I am near. Inni qareeb. But the ayah said, if my slaves ask you about me, ibadi. So you, somebody might say, but I'm not a good slave. I'm not, I'm not that good. Maybe Allah is close to the people that are good, but I'm, I'm not one of those guys. How can He be close to me? Allah says, ujibu. I respond, and before I share this with you, you need to understand the comparison. How many of you work for a big corporation? If you work for a big corporation, maybe 500 employees, 1000 employees, how often do you see your CEO? You don't. If maybe you saw your CEO, how long would it be? Oh, minutes are pretty heavy, maybe a couple of seconds maybe. Dua is given so you can get straight. You can be heading in the right direction. You can be guided. لَعَلَّهُمْ يرشدون. Allah is saying there's a direct connection between talking to Him, asking for, for things, and being guided. That is why the surah of guidance, the surah of Fatiha, how do we ask for guidance? In a dua. Ihdina. We're learning guidance and dua are one and the same. They're fused together. They're inseparable entities. And you and I, if we're not making a lot of dua, then I can guarantee you we do not have a lot of guidance. Allah says, they should believe in me, they should ask me, they should try to respond to me, so that they can be set straight. You don't make dua and you're gonna have problems. You're gonna have problems. This, the word slave, is there any lower job description in existence? No. Slave means there's no one below you, bro. You know, there's no one below you. And Allah is Rabb, which means there's no one higher than him. So now you're talking about communication between the highest possible and the lowest possible. In every other situation in the world, this conversation is impossible. And if it happens, it'll happen. If you get lucky, if you really get lucky, it might, might, might happen by chance. It might, might occur. But you're not gonna be able to, and if it happens, it won't be regular. It's weird. Allah says, I am near to my slaves. First of all, you would think master should be distant from slaves. But this supremely high says, as low as you are as slaves, I am near you. And on top of that, you know, um, he can't respond to, uh, uh, someone up above doesn't respond to all your requests. Allah says, Ujibu, I immediately respond. 
I immediately respond. What comes first, request or response? Logically speaking, what comes first? Allah didn't even mention the request, that is إِذَا دَعَانِي That's the request portion of the ayah, we haven't even translated that yet. Allah says, I'm so anxious to respond, I'll mention my response first, I'll mention the request later. SubhanAllah. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِي is first, إِذَا دَعَانِ is later, it's incredible. The actual sequence is, إِذَا دَعَانِي أُجِيب When he calls me, I answer. He says, no, I answer when he calls. He mentions his enthusiasm. First we learn he's in wait, he's waiting for us to ask about him. Then he says, I will call, I will respond immediately. By the way, there are two, uh, two words for answering. There's astajibu and ujibu. Astajibu means I will try to answer or I will answer over time. Two meanings. I will try to answer and I will answer over time. Also means I want to answer. Just because somebody wants to answer, does that mean they actually answer? No. But if you say ujibu, it means I immediately answer. People that are important, you have to leave them voicemails and they will maybe call you back in two years. Allah says, you don't have to leave me a voicemail. I'll respond immediately. Allah is saying, I'm not talking about me responding to someone who makes dua all the time, he prays to me all the time. Even if there's a guy who's never prayed to me and he decided one time to turn to me sincerely. One time he made dua to me. That guy, I'm talking about that guy, da'wata, a single call. And then he said, ad-da'i. I respond to the call of the caller. Let me tell you this. A caller could be anybody, isn't it? A caller could be anyone. Does a caller have to be a righteous person to be a caller? No. The Arabic word caller captures anybody. Allah didn't say you have to be this righteous, your beard has to be this long, you must have prayed this many prayers, you must have finished hajj, you must have done this and this and this, and you must be purified of all these sins before you get to call me. He says, so long as you're a caller, and even if you call once, I'll respond. How many calls does he get? Can you imagine? Now when you get a lot of calls, is it easy for you to, for you and me, to forget who was I talking to? I have a horrible memory. I mean, I mix up my kids' names. I have a terrible memory. Allah did not say, and by the way, when somebody is anonymous, you call them a caller. When somebody is known and recognized, you call them the caller. Allah didn't say, Ujibu da'wata da'in. He said, Ujibu da'wata da'i. I respond to the call of the caller. Meaning he's not just anyone to me. He is not an A, he is a the. He is particular to me. He's unique to me. He's an individual to me. So you and I have a direct, no shared access with Allah. In which He recognizes every one of our presences. And every single one of our du'as. Because du'a could have been all du'a, but da'wah is every single one of them. Let me conclude with this. This ayah. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا <laughs> Then they should try to respond to me. He said, I respond over time or immediately? What did he, which one did he say? You remember? I respond immediately. Allah didn't say, well, you should respond immediately too to me. He said, no. Then they should at least try to respond to me. They should at least want to respond to me. Allah says, I'm not expecting too much from you. At least give me a sincere effort. Because Allah guarantees it. So he says, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا Try to respond to me. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And they should believe in me. Allah mentioned believing in him at the end because when people pray to Allah, Ya Allah, get me a raise. Ya Allah, let me marry that girl. Let the family say yes. I know her father hates me, but please, somehow, <laughs> put something in his heart. Put something in his heart. And the girl's making dua, Ya Allah, not that guy. Please, not that guy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're making dua and sometimes you don't see the results of your dua. Sometimes you don't, you don't see the results immediately. And then you start thinking, well, God said He's going to respond immediately, where's my raise? <laughs> ya Allah, by the time I reach my car today, my 1978 Cutlass Sierra in the parking lot, let it be a BMW M5. <laughs> 2012. <laughs> Navigation, spinner rims will be nice. Amin. <laughs> and you get to the parking lot, you're like, what's up God? <laughs> It's Ramadan and everything. Nothing working. No, 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 no. Allah says, the prayers are answered not on your schedule. Allah will respond. 
but He will give you what's best for you. You don't even know what's best for yourself. Allah knows what's better for you. He'll respond though, in His way. In, and His way is way better than your way, trust me. So that requires you to believe Him, that His way is better. And don't, don't be like one of those obnoxious du'a people. You know what an obnoxious du'a per- person is? You know, bro, I had, an, I had a midterm, and I, was, I made like so much du'a. And I still failed. That's why I don't pray. <laughs> this is, du'a is not Amazon.com. I placed the order, and I said expedited shipping, and it didn't show up. I don't give them orders anymore. You're, you're not Allah's customer. You don't place orders with Allah. You know the people who talk like that were the followers of Musa. Udu'u lana rabbak, yukhrij lana. Call your, make dua to Allah, give us something. Come on, hook us up. The, fo- the followers of Fir'aun talk like that. Udu'u lana rabbak, call your, call your master, make these, these nine signs stop. Make them stop. You think you're entitled to get Allah to do what you want to do? Then you sound like the misguided followers of Fir'aun or the misguided, you know, excuse of followers of Musa alayhi salam. That's what you've become. Come on, don't have an attitude when you make dua to Allah. Understand, He's the highest, you are the lowest. Maybe you forgot that. Just because He made Himself available, you think you just, you lose your place. You start thinking, man, I made dua and nothing happened. Come on. You can't have that attitude. You can't. And a lot of people lose faith because their du'as are not answered. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.